Maria, tá me ouvindo? Sim, avisa eles que eu tô na Amazônia, no meio da Navilhanas, maior arquipélago de água doce do planeta. So she said that she's in the Amazon forest in Anavillanas, the biggest freshwater archipelago in the planet. <laughs> Por mais que a conexão de internet não seja boa, mas a conexão de energia é excelente. <risos> as much as the internet connection is not good, the energy connection is excellent. So. <risos> e eu espero que essa energia passe para vocês. So she hopes that this energy arrives here to us. Cinco segundos de conexão profunda vale por uma live de uma hora. <risos> Five seconds of a a deep connection is worth a whole hour of internet connection. Eu vou mostrar aqui um pouquinho de onde eu tô. She's gonna show where she is. Eu tô entre a floresta e o rio negro. It's between the forest and the Negro River. Oh, meu Deus! Venha aqui, nós queremos que vocês nos guiem. Oh, meus guerreiros, venha aqui, nós queremos que vocês nos guiem. Ao ir, ao ir, ao nós queremos que vocês nos guiem. Querida, então o que a gente vai fazer, muito grata. É tradução não simultânea. Você fala um pouquinho e eu traduzo. Você fala um pouquinho e eu traduzo, tá bom? Tá bom. É... Eu queria falar um pouco sobre a conexão nossa quanto seres existentes aqui no planeta. Nós existimos quanto uma espécie que, na visão dos povos originários, não tem nada diferente das outras todas espécies. She wants so to much. talk about the connection of us here being in this planet and the connection of the regional native people uh, is another, a different connection to the other beings. Fala so so da mente, Maria, que aí Sim. eu vou traduzindo por parte. Nós somos um único corpo We existindo are, uh, nessa camada superficial do planeta. We are one body existing in this superficial layer of the planet. Não tem diferença entre a minha existência, a existência das árvores, das águas, dos animais. There is no difference between my existence and the existence of the trees, of the animals, of the Rivers. I will open her audios and translate her audios while she's out, okay? Tá me ouvindo? Tô, Sim, querida, eu tava ouvindo seus áudios para traduzir, mas pode vir. Eu parou, você parou onde a tradução? Eu tava comentando, pode continuar o que eu tava falando, que vocês são diferentes, que os, as existências diferentes das árvores. É, não temos, né? 
Uhum, sim. É tudo interconectado. Então, quando a gente fala de corpo-território, é esse lugar onde o indivíduo se manifesta com todo o seu pertencimento, cultura e cosmo percepção de mundo. So when we talk about body territory, it is this place where the individual person manifests with all her or his conception of world, um, of territory, of body, conception of the world. Mas não diferente de um pássaro, e não diferente de uma árvore, e não diferente de um rio ou de um oceano. But not different than a bird, than a tree, a river, or an ocean. E isso nos unifica a partir do indivíduo. And that unifies us, starting from the individual person. Então, para especificamente o ser humano, num momento em que tudo está se unificando no sentido pejorativo da coisa, a individualidade de pertencimento está sendo quebrada, essa membrana está sendo rompida. So in a moment of the world where the individual, where everything is being unified in the bad sense of the world, that there is no more place for the individual person, the, the recognition of uh, your individuality, Demarcar o corpo território é muito importante. É compreender qual lugar que a gente ocupa. Mm -hmm. so, Inter... to... so, to give contour, to give limits to your body territory and to affirm it is very important. So she left again. I'm gonna go back to her audios. Não, ok, voltei. Ah, voltou, voltou. <risos> então, a necessidade de demarcar esse território é porque sabendo de onde viemos, para onde vamos, nós começamos a nos enraizar e conectar com a nossa profundidade. So the importance of um giving contour and limits to this body territory and to give identity to it, to know where we came from and to where we are going, uh, that allows us to deepen our roots. E através dessa profundidade é que acontece toda a conexão. And it's through deepening, the deepening of these roots that all the connection happens. Tanto de dentro para dentro. Both from inside to the inside of us. Como de dentro para fora. As much as from the inside towards the outside. Então hoje eu quis vir falar sobre a biodesconstrução. So today she wants to talk about bioconstruction. Biodesconstruction. Bio, de, bio, bio deconstruction. É, porque um, o conceito inicial da bioconstrução era uma arquitetura viva para a vida. Because the first concept of bioconstruction is that it would be an, a living architecture for life. Life Não architecture só... for life. E não só a vida humana, todas as vidas, todas as formas de existência. Not only human life, but all life, all of the forms of existing in this world. Então, é, falar de biodesconstrução é para que a gente pare e reveja os conceitos da bioconstrução na profundidade. So, talking about biodeconstruction is for us to stop and review the concepts of bioconstruction today. Então, reality. quando eu chego num território, num terreno, num lugar em que eu anseio, desejo construir algo. 
So when I arrive in a place, in a land where I want to build something, a primeira coisa que eu tenho que fazer é sentir se o que está à minha volta deseja também. The first thing that I have to do is to feel if what's around me also wants that. E para isso, o corpo e o território tem que estar bem demarcado. And for that, the body territory really has to be well um, affirmed, limited. Like, has to have its limits very clear. E porque a bioconstrução não tem a ver só com materiais e tecnologias, mas tem a ver com sensibilidade. Because it Uh, the bio deconstruction doesn't have to have doesn't have only to have with technology but also with sensibility sensitivity sensibilidade afeto e respeito sensitivity affection and respect então baseado nisso nós observamos todas as formas de vida ao redor e começamos um diálogo respeitoso para que então esse abrigo possa ser construído ou não também. So based on this we start to observe and feel all the life around us uh, so that this place can be built or not. Então os povos originários inicialmente nômades, respeitavam esses, esses ciclos, respeitavam... So the native people that at first were nomadic, they were respecting the cycle, they were respecting this dialogue, this conversation with these beings around. Ouviu, Clara, que deu uma falhada aqui. Pode continuar, querida. Um, então eu se so, é, se reconectar com a fonte de um abrigo. So this allows us to reconnect with the source of a shelter, a real shelter. Uma coisa bem relevante dos povos originários é o coletivo. Então a maioria das tecnologias empregadas ou dos abrigos gerados eram feitos a partir do coletivo. So something very important for the native people is the collective living, the community. So everything that was created and generated was uh, from the community with the community, done by the community and the collective work. Ou seja, encontrando uma caverna, ou seja, produzindo arquitetura, toda a comunidade se reunia para compreender o melhor lugar de viver. Oi, oi! Whether it was finding um, a cave or getting together to build something around like architecture wise all the community gathered to decide what to do e esse é o nosso grande desafio da atualidade and this is our big challenge of today nossa sociedade está sendo empurrada para o abismo da solidão our society is being pushed to the abyss of loneliness. E nós que estamos aí no alto das montanhas, vendo longe. And us that are there on top of the mountain, seeing way ahead. Now she left and we left curious about what we are seeing. <laughs> okay. If let's see. So <clears throat> 
Yeah, Alessandra, go ahead. You want to say something? I, I was just uh, want to say that uh, even with these initial words, you know, it, it brings uh, um, this deconstruct sound, like deconstructing our Western ways of building or even considering what is a home that is so centered only on the human animal needs. Um, this explode <laughs> completely our, um, our usual um, parameters of what it is an architecture and uh, to host um, or to become a shelter, a refuge for whom. This is already uh, such a interesting, no? Um, unlearning architecture, unlearning what is a home when we need to conceive a home for all the living beings beyond us and also for the beings that have lived before and after us. This idea of a different temporality of what a home needs to be. I think this is uh, very important and very resonating in a moment in which we can see in the way our cities are built, our waters are forced into the pipes, our walls, the way our homes are, have been conceived out of a constant extraction and violence against other forms of living, this invitation to to listen and to feel if it is necessary or not, and to do this as a collective that include the more than human collective, I, I think it's uh, so inspiring to hear these words today. But Maria is back, so we can give it back to her. Thank you, dear. Maria, Alessandra estava falando que só... Está escutando, querida? <laughs> She's out again. Mm -hmm. I was wondering um, maybe also if anybody here wants to leave in the chat any comment or question that I can um, write to her and maybe she can send an audio about it. Meanwhile, what I can do is keep on translating the audios that she had sent me what do you guys think very good yeah okay <clears throat> so i'm listening at the same time and i'm gonna do a simultaneous translation with her audio okay So she's saying a little bit about, it might repeat, but I'm going to say anyways. She's saying how we are interconnected, not only amongst human beings, but with all of the uh, forces and forms of energy around us. With the trees, with the waters, and the animals. Eu vou... Finalizar ah, voltou. Fala, pode pode finalizar, finalizar, que eu estava traduzindo. A gente ficou curioso de saber o que, que a gente vê do alto da montanha. Você falou e a gente ficou sem saber. Então, do alto da montanha, a gente reimagina a educação. So, what she's saying that we see from the top of the mountain is that we are reimagining education. And she went again. Ah, oh, with a beautiful smile. <laughs> do you guys think we go to the questions already? Or do, should I Maybe keep on? Because, yeah. Because we have little time at yes. this point. I, I agree. A proposal that these messages that she sent you, they can become our next uh, sound objects and we can sure. build something. In our radio, in our publications, our audiovisual, fantastic ecoversity teams, we will <laughs> do a good use of this precious material. But maybe awesome. since we don't have much time, for example, I wanted just to share something about um, the project of the Aldeia. No, if you can, even you, Clara Luz, explain what it is an Aldeia 
how indigenous people are in this process of reclaiming those territories that were theirs to begin with and by theirs uh, we understand that they move in this idea of a larger interspecies uh, interbeing family and this uh, dream that you and all in Instituto Etno have to to with the land that has accepted this project of building an aldea in which way this aldea would be inter uh, national, like transnational, even within a notion of uh, tribe, different nation, different tribes of the original people of Brazil. And now the, 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 the building, how the, the construction will reflect also the different technologies that come from different groups. Yes, thank you. Um, so here in Brazil, the native people like in a lot of places, are in a lot of, in the process of takeover of lands that originally was theirs, and that have been invaded um, by farm owners or agribusinesses, or throughout history, by private land owners. So a lot of the indigenous people have had to flee their lands. Uh, and now, little by little, uh, finding again the roots and the families and also in the process of taking over of their identity, recognizing that they are uh, native people, that they are indigenous people. They are going back to their original ancestral lands from, connected to their families. So this process of recognizing yourself, recognizing oneself as indigenous person is really... Um, um, uh, happening nowadays here in Brazil and at the same time what we're trying to do so Maria is a Tupinamba ethnicity and the what she brings here through Instituto Etno and this new community that we are raising here rising here where we are uh, has the original idea of community of the native people because beyond all the um, uh, identity affirmation as I am from one ethnicity or you are from another ethnicity, which is important for somebody to recognize oneself as indigenous person and to recognize where the roots came from, um, there is also the idea that everybody that is indigenous people or everybody that is connected to the land is one whole body so it doesn't matter from which ethnicity i am from or we don't need to compete as to uh, what ethnicity is more indigenous than other or any of that because uh, originally the idea of community is that we're all one that we can work together that uh, we only work when we are together and that we are more when we are together and we can build more when we are together. We learn more when we are together. And what's, we, what unites us is bigger than what divides us or makes the difference that we, the differences that we have, whether it's ethnicity or whatever else, is something that comes to add to what we are. So here in Netno, the new community that we are raising, that we are rising, is for all ethnicities. Even though Maria is from one ethnicity in, in particular, we are inviting it to be a multi-ethnic place, not only of indigenous uh, roots, but also all peoples from all origins and all roots. So this is what we believe to be at the roots of the idea of community. And this is what we're trying to regenerate. And this is why Maria talks about re-existing. It's not only resisting, but re-existing in this new context, in the new today. And what Alessandra was saying uh, is, oh, Maria is back. Maria, querida. 
eu tô falando um pouquinho que você pode continuar. Eu acabei de falar sobre como a Alessandra pediu para falar um pouco sobre o que, a aldeia que a gente está começando aqui, né? Oh, she's out again. So the community that we're doing, that we're, um, that we are bringing about, that we are rising here, also has the architecture, the idea of architecture and the idea of building everything that Maria has been saying uh, also brings uh, elements from the indigenous ways, original ways of connecting to the land, connecting, connecting to the earth. Uh, back then, it, everything was um, built in a way that when the land already like expired its resources, as nomadic people that they were, they would go to a new land to start building again and use the resources from this land. So what we're trying to do now is bringing this knowledge um, of building with earth and all the other natural materials and also this concept of what do we need to do like maria was saying to start building something but also using modern technologies uh to make it as having um um a base uh like uh, i forgot the word in english like the fun the base the base of the of the housing of the building right foundation thank you yes so, so making as so the foundation is also something that will last using uh natural um bioconstruction technology as well combined with all the other construction technologies ancestral technologies using the materials that are around us. This not only architecture-wise, but also to be in a place that is connected to all the surroundings that we are in respect to all the beings that we are listening, like Maria said, having this dialogue, allowing this dialogue to continue while we are inside the places, for these places to be a place of care, a place of healing, a place of connection. So this is um, a little bit of what I feel that I can say about the bio deconstruction that connects all that all of the feeling that we have to be inside when we're building something, but also what it represents afterwards, uh, like technique wise. Also, mm -hmm. is that a I little bit? Yeah, no, thank you so much. I think, and I think uh, to care, healing, and connection, we, we should add uh, this question of learning. So, this is and will be a place of learning where people come together to build together, a place where the uh, different technique and approach of building through different material and different knowledge system will gather. And I uh, because I, I really think this is so much that moves Maria and all of you to create this, uh, this place where learning is constant. It's so much part of the work and where everyone can learn all the time <laughs> and, and can bring all that we know. So also this recognition that all of us have tools and that so many tools that have been silenced or have been um, deemed archaic are right now so contemporary and so necessary. For example, I remember when we were there, a lot of this uh, or architecture of the original people, because it's uh, built on dynamics, dynamic of the entire ecosystem that are also much more resistant or easy to rebuild in times of uh, ecological crisis and climate change and all that climate change is bringing to our place. We are now facing drought where before there was water, uh, flooding where before was not, the wind, the, the, the hurricanes and all that from north to south is uh, 
uh, coming as a result of our extractivist uh, and uh, use of resources in a way that is so violent that, you know, what is called the Anthropocene, the, the Capitalocene moment we are part of. And I feel this type of building architecture that respond to weather, respond to the ecosystem, that can be moved quickly, can be rebuilt, is also something that uh, it's, uh, it's a very important uh, knowledge uh, and learning that we should uh, all <laughs> be exposed to. It really reverses the paradigm of what it means. And also I was really touched by this um, proposal of uh, not building, like I I'm facing to the same choice of there is already so much built that also sometimes instead of building more, we should avoid, we should maybe re refurbish, up, re recycle, uh, upcycle what already exists and in which ways, no? So, but she was back for a moment. Now she disappeared again. How are we doing in terms of time then? We started a bit. Yeah, about 10 more minutes. Uh, as oh. the next session, people will be flowing in. Yeah, after yeah. that. So, Alessandra, thank you for saying that. And um, Greg, I sent her your message, your question to her. And let's see if she answers, right? Uh, like Alessandra was saying, yes, this place that we are building is going to be, let's say, like the uh, like the headquarters of Instituto Etno and all the um, uh, group of ecoversities that we have. And one of them is going to is called Etno Terra, Etno Earth, which is related to all this that we're talking here, the bio deconstruction in all levels. And um, like Alessandra said, yes, for us, the main thing is that we learn with life. We learn all the time. We learn with everybody. And our main way of learning, we say, is the pedagogy of life and living to get and the awareness, right, awareness raising through living together. So that for us is the main important thing. And I'd like to read some, uh, translate the something that Maria told, said. Um, that she would like me to say to you guys as a final uh, reflection uh, for this session. So I'm going to listen in WhatsApp and simultaneously translate to you guys. Um, okay. So she's saying, so when we reimagine education, the only way to do the new, to make the new, to do something that is new, to innovate, is together. With everything and everybody. Everywhere, all the time. And especially now. So that's what she wanted me to say to you guys as a final reflection. And Greg, what I can do is if you want to leave here your email address or your WhatsApp number, I will tell you the answer that Maria has for the question that you had here in the chat. Hmm. What do you think, Alessandra? Of, uh, the material, maybe I can say what uh, I've learned or how I have uh, understood the, the approach towards the material is that um, at least how traditionally, um, yeah, before climate change um, things happen, is that when you work with material from your locality, with the bamboo, with the quality of the soil, with the stray, with the wood that is there in your surrounding, these are material that are alive and come from an ecosystem. So they have the property and they can respond 
um, to the ecosystem and the needs of this ecosystem and how it is organized. So it's, uh, it makes more sense because it's just organically there and uh, it's what we work with is what we work with there. So sometimes it's uh, what is left from our agriculture practice, what we cut from the trees that we trim and draft and during the drafting or you know how the quality of a certain um, material is done because the water has a certain quality and the soil a certain quality so the mixture becomes something of course this is a little bit changed because the climate is changing so there are different challenges but i think uh, my understanding was that we need to find the solutions where we are of course, uh, considering also all that uh, the knowledge has brought us the experimenting with, with other material or other technique that may belong to other traditions is not that we, we don't see what is available. But the idea is to, to respect also to create less waste, to reuse what's there and to use what is organically already part of your land. And what are the knowledge that are there? Another thing I would like to, to underline on this uh, really strong invitation for togetherness, something beautiful that we witnessed there is their technology of the Muchi round. The Muchirao is a, is a call for your neighbors to come and build with you or do something that you need to do. And we visited the beautiful agroforest of the Uniflux. It's another beautiful ecoversity, always in Sierra Grande, or even the Muchirao that was done in the courtyard of Instituto Etno to build the, the, the oven the clay uh, mud built uh, oven community oven for example this is also what we can call a tool a convivial tool a technology the ability to call our friends and our neighbors when we need something with this idea of reciprocity and responsibility mm. that when they will need something we will go and this is also the foundation of how this uh, new aldea is going to be built through a large <laughs> planetarian muchi round where a lot of people will come from different parts of Brazil with different uh, approach to bioarchitecture, different um, original knowledge. But also some of us may feel this call and may want to go and contribute. And this is something we all have, this idea, you know, of mutual aid, of uh, participating in each other, building our dream together. It's something that even for us in the West, in urban setting, we still have, all, all being have these tools. It's just sometimes necessary to to name them and to make them possible. And a strong, uh, I left with really this uh, strong uh, invitation of uh, being together. I, I keep hearing uh, Maria's voice saying, this is a moment we need to be together because the challenge we are facing is really big. We are basically, as some say, facing the sixth extinction you know, the, the, the possibility that our own species will not survive. This is not a moment to be divided because we have different language, different ethnicity, different ways of doing. With all the complexity that uh, is carried when different knowledge systems are united, we need to go through that and those challenges and still be together and do something together. I. I keep hearing her insisting on this part, which for me is really important because we are often uh, in uh, an environment in which political identity have become our modes of operating. And, you know, sometimes our traps, even if it is very important for all of us to, to situate ourselves and to, to understand from where we speak and 
you know, what are also the privileges that uh, uh, we carry and the asymmetry of power and all this is very important, but we need to learn also how to work with and within and beyond our differences and come together. This is a call that uh, the original people are really strongly um, putting out. And um, I feel, yeah, it's, it's important to, to amplify that call and, and uh, learn how to respond to it. And this means a lot of unlearning for us. It means also the centering. It means uh, humility and it means uh, being ready to learn in different ways and what that produces in us. But it is a time where this it's needed to happen. Thank you.